we have to talk about we have to talk about drake and 21 savage album her loss what an absolute banger unfortunately it wasn't a surprise drop i would have liked it to be a surprise drop but the fact that dj academics you know um double hamburger filled face couldn't help himself to spill the news bless him um you know if I, if I was flipping in communication with drake also i'd probably want to maybe spill the news and he basically alluded to it for some reason some of us carty fanboys thought it was going to be a playboy carty album i don't know why we thought that maybe because he said something about the people maybe not being the person not being press friendly i don't know for some reason we thought it was it was flipping gonna be cardi it's gonna be sorry play with cardi then obviously it was announced through drake and 21 savage that they were gonna put the album out so we put the things together because you're saying it's a big person surprise drop blah 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 and then we finally got the news so the surprise was kind of ruined a little bit but the music wasn't i don't think anybody and myself included and i would count myself to be a pretty much a bit of a fan of music and shit i'm a bit clued up i had no idea what was coming out no idea on the tunes no idea what i'm pro show going for zero even the title her loss i didn't really have an idea what the theme they were kind of going for and what kind of angle they were kind of pursuing the album artwork came out i didn't really have any clue about it either it's some random you know uh what you call it dancer from some atlanta club i guess more people are familiar with her than i am but she seems cool but in general i didn't have anything to no prior knowledge of it and i think that was quite refreshing when it comes to a drake album and off the back of that tech house album that came out that everyone hated especially people in north america i think this was a good reminder of just how good drake is at rapping i think he does the melodic thing really well he obviously enjoys it he obviously has the versatility and the ability to do afro beats to do probably I'm a piano he's obviously some illustration of that to do the tech house stuff to do the melodic house stuff to do the minimal whatever you want to call it that genre of things he's clearly versatile in the fact that he can jump on different you know sounds especially the UK rap stuff UK drill stuff clearly but when it comes to the bread and butter of being able to rap on hip-hop traditional hip-hop beats or you know beats that you would kind of describe to be more hip-hop than whatever else he's an elite level rapper like really up there and that's one thing I, I was happy that got showcased on his album i think most of us kind of had a feeling it would happen because it was drake and 21 savage it was, it was unlikely that 21 savage was going to suddenly be harmonizing all over the, the flipping album even though he has a couple of tracks on their way he is kind of singing which is quite cool but for the most part we knew if drake was going to be doing a collab tape with 21 savage that most likely it would be him going bar for bar back-to-back -back style and it was absolutely everything that i wanted to hear and more and for me it's been on repeat in my playlist listening to front and back um since it dropped in the gym it's the perfect in my opinion gym album maybe with a couple of you know um omissions here or there you can take out an, a track that you don't want here and there i know with apple music you just delete tracks if you don't want them on the album itself or you can make a whole entire playlist of an album that you want to listen to in terms of this overall sound but from front to back i feel like this is the easily in my opinion the most cohesive drake album there has been in a very very long time especially off the back of that tech house album which i probably think might been a bit of a master stroke in terms of putting an album out that's going to divide opinion and then off the back of that put out an album that's gonna really hit home with your fans this is a great way to do it it's kind of a feel like that um honestly never mind was maybe a bit of a palate cleanser and then you hit them with flipping her loss and then suddenly everyone's like back on a flipping uh drake hype train again um, but 21 also you know spun the block and did absolutely amazing on here um obviously my standout track that one something i've kind of been playing on repeat on bloody repeat has been back outside boys uh privileged rappers is amazing there's a video to it now that kind of spoofs on the whole colors thing that i'm obviously a big fan of um what else is there that i love um i love pussy and millions with travis scott that's a very very good tune broke boys i'm a big fan of that also middle of the ocean where drake spazzes for six minutes is absolutely incredible uh free aiming glenwood is pretty cool because it sounds like it should be a track by drake because we didn't see who was on each track and it's only got one feature with travis scott which is interesting but it sounds like it should be a feature with drake it should be a drake kind of track but it's not it's a 21 savage track so that's awesome and then um i guess it's fucking me to end it as well it's absolutely a balance one album to kind of go through but an absolutely splendid album from beginning to end i can't really say anything wrong about it the only thing i would say is a slight wrong about it is the end of bs 
Is it the NWS on bullshit? I think it's in the end of on bullshit. There's this skit that they feature where it features this guy, Alpha Car, who, you know, don't really know much about him, but the only thing I knew of him prior was that he was close friends with Virgil, very connected to that whole crew of people. And um, he did actually a pretty decent interview with, um, I think I've got the podcast on Complex, they talk about trainers, and he gave some really cool insights about Virgil and their friendships, and clearly they were very close. Clearly something that he was pretty still hurt up and caught up about, but it was good to hear from an actual friend of his about how Virgil was behind the scenes and how they kind of came up together. And he essentially, from all accounts, is basically a celebrity car dealer to the stars but he does it in an interesting way because he's not only you know doing the standard you know lamborghini flipping trucks and shit it's absolutely a car aficionado thing he's actually a car head he's buying stuff that's been made you know what's this is a ferrari from the 70s or 80s i don't know what years they are but loads of old and vintage um cars that obviously people that are only into cars will actually appreciate and people obviously love him for that there's oh my god is that a, is that a golf gti Maybe there is a golf shoes, yeah, there. there's one there, but clearly someone that's plugged into that sort of scene. But he comes across pretty cool in terms of cars, get it? I understand the vibe. But the smack talk that he's speaking on this album, I just don't believe. He's talking about the Paris lights and about turning things on, and I'm this guy, like, he is talking some crud, some big, big crud, and it just doesn't sound believable because you look at the dude and you don't think that, he's on that time at all you don't you know the only lights he's turning off are his bedroom lamp light do you know what i mean you don't necessarily think he's turning off any lights off on the other for tower so i felt that little segment was a bit weird and also because drake essentially i always feel like is somebody that feels like to me he's very anti paris fashion week i don't feel like he's one of the drippy artists that kind of runs the paris fashion week because paris fashion week kind of feels especially for menswear it feels like it's the it feels like it's the Met Gala for the lads, isn't it? For the straights, right? <laughs> Paris Fashion Week, especially men's. It's a Met Gala for the straights. So they all run over there to put their best outfit on to get fucking sunned and embarrassed by these flipping French aristocrats and socialites and shit. But they go there to get seen and be heard and whatnot. And, you know, he's there partaking. But I always felt like Drake was the kind of he went against it he didn't really like to vibe with it too much i don't really think i've seen many images of drake at paris fashion week hanging out having a good time he doesn't necessarily go he tends to kind of avoid it for some reason so to have this guy who i would describe as the quintessential paris fashion week dude oh yeah this is him he was on the complex show um what's it called the complex sneaker show but to have him on this type of show or to have him on this album just felt a little bit weird to me felt a little bit cringe if i'm being completely honest i didn't like it in the slightest um and I had to skip it. And it kind of took me out of the zone of listening to the album. You know what I mean? It just, the, the, I didn't believe the bass in his voice when you're saying the things that he was saying. Nothing felt believable. It just felt a little bit lame. So I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of it myself. You know, and calling yourself Alpha Car as well is a little bit lame. I, I don't know if that's his actual name. Who knows? But regardless, I've, I've always had a thing with people who wear car merch anyway. I feel like it's proper wild ad things to be walking around with car merch. It's probably just as bad as people who wear Black Sabbath t-shirts and can't name a single song or don't know who Ozzy Osbourne is it's incredibly lame right obviously you know selling flipping luxury French cars pays isn't it Do you know what I mean you get you get booed up with a little little, little little ting but I always feel like people who dress you know in car merch you know look my man hopefully he's an actual mechanic because standing around in a mechanic shop with a t-shirt on with a towel on, looking like you're working is like oh prime prime loser behavior but yeah i just didn't like him on the album i didn't like the only thing that i didn't like that really snapped me out of it and i would rather not have him on there personally as a little skit thing but i get it if people did enjoy it i get it if you did enjoy it um and then the other thing that i thought was pretty cool about it was the response from ice spice i thought she responded pretty well to a lyric that people attribute to being a drake diss towards her on back house back outside boys um where he says something along the lines of she a 10 trying to rap it's good on mute <laughs> yeah because the entire album essentially is a uh it's kind of like um the misogynist greatest hits right it's a it's an album made for the fellas i feel like it's definitely something future would definitely agree with in terms of some of the sentiments being said on that track on that record overall and i thought that bar from drake is definitely something that personified it right she's a 10 trying to rap or she a, she a 10 trying to rap it's good on mute and obviously she replied and i thought like her reply was absolutely great and right on the money and i thought for me 
was proof that I Spice would definitely have a long and prosperous career in the scene, collect her coins and just sail off into the sunset. I feel she'll have a good one. Even if it doesn't last that long, she'll make her money because she doesn't take herself too seriously and is able to joke and laugh at the meme. And she responded to that and said, at least I'm a 10. Shrug emoji, laugh, crying, laughing out loud emoji, which I thought was a perfect reply. And of course, people on social media, ever the miserable cunts that they are, she's not really a 10, so he's probably not talking about her. It's probably somebody else. Like, shut up. Keep it to yourself. No one cares what you think. So I thought that was absolutely brilliant. So big up her. Um, and then, uh, what was that? What, what was on Circo Loco that I wanted to speak about here? Was this the Megan line? I think that might have been the Megan line. Was it? Yeah, that was, yeah. So, of course, the Circo Loco track was the flipping Megan line that everyone was flipping going crazy about, which I don't necessarily think was that big of a deal. Um, if anything, it was maybe a really clever play on words, a double entendre. But also, I think in general, you're allowed to joke and laugh about things that happen in culture. You should be able to, right? The lyric itself from Circo Loco is goes as follows. Um, this bitch lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion. She don't get the joke, but she's still smiling. And for me, I feel like this is a clear double entendre, which it could mean it was a diss, but it also could mean whatever the internet has convinced itself it means with flipping drake allegedly talking about this other lady called elk the stallion who was a former video vixen from years ago who allegedly had you know a really incredible flipping bum who lied about not getting shots but she did blah 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 so it could be a play on words in that regard you know shots maybe getting shot shots in the ass who knows but we know deep down majorly most likely it's probably a shot at megan but even if it was who cares it's an event that happened in culture if it goes proven to be incorrect it's right but you should be allowed to joke and comment on things in rap even if it means you're kind of doing it in a somewhat disparaging way that's the same way we speak you should be able to rap the same way you speak i don't get the flipping uproar behind it but of course if you're on megan's side of things it completely understandable why you'd get irate at one of the biggest stars in music let alone culture right deciding to basically name drop you in a bar in one of the most hotly anticipated albums of this year because you know it dropped just before the end of the year definitely for me album of the year contender and everyone's listening to it at the same time and then you've got everybody repeating this bar and basically put into question a very traumatic event that you had happened to that you're still trying to deal with and i can understand why you respond the way that she did on twitter and she absolutely went crazy um she started off going the first tweet i know i'm very popular but y'all gotta stop um attaching weak ass conspiracy theories in bars to my name niggas no hoes ever address me or at me with a fact or receipt i'm a clout bitch keep sucking my pussy which is weird because you know you can't say drake's trying to get clout off you and he's the biggest artist out but you know whatever another one says he said stallion though so technically he did say your name and she said a stallion is slang for a tall thick woman so she was coping a bit there hoping he wasn't saying anything about her then i guess she got word from her camp that it was about her and came back with this one stop using my shooting for clout bitch ass niggas since when the fuck is it called to joke about women getting shot you niggas especially rap niggas are lame ready to boycott about shoes and clothes but dog power on a black woman when she say one of your homeboys abuse her so clearly she's doubling down and she's not letting it go not letting it slide you know in her head Tory Lanez did shoot her and she's gonna ride it until the cows come home and then she iterated it again and said when the motherfucking facts come out remember who your ho all your ho ass for favorite rappers that stood behind a nigga that shot a female another one says people attack me all attack me all y'all go for it i defend myself now i'm doing too much every time it never ends and this don't happen until i came out and i said i got shot y'all don't fuck with me okay cool fuck it bye so clearly she's pissed off about the resentment and you know reception she's getting people online clearly for me i don't think it's that big of a deal I feel like people should be allowed to joke and kill on it. But of course, if you're on her side of things and if, if it is as traumatic as she's describing it to be and she believes it happened to where it did happen in a, in, a, in her from her account, then of course you're going to be upset and pissed off about it. So I can get it from that regard. But I felt like her coming out and responding like this was lame. I thought little Yatty coming out and basically talking for Drake was lame also. Um, I feel like just let just let art live. Have people interpret it, they interpret it. But the explanations and the clearing and clarification don't get me wrong it didn't come from drake itself but i feel like all that stuff is absolutely lame not a fan of it in the slightest so let's move on from that one but the one i went to end with when it comes to this whole entire thing 
especially as a dude, can we spare a thought for a minute for flipping Pilots and Fontaine? Right, um, Ghost Rider to the Stars, most notably Megan, sorry, most notably Cardi B, and maybe Megan Thee Stallion, who knows? But obviously, a um, you know, in a relationship with Megan Thee Stallion at the moment, can we spare a thought for this guy? He's having to sit by and essentially see the entire rap community confess out loud without saying, and some of them saying explicitly that they've smashed his girl. And I don't know if they smashed her when they were together because there's accounts of the Tory thing. I don't know if the pilot was around during the Tory thing. Who knows? There's the flipping the baby situation where he said in the bar or that he smashed a flipping Megan Thee Stallion also. And it looks like they were both maybe double teaming her at the same time. Or maybe they didn't know that each other was smashing. Then part of some Fontaine thing. Then there's this Drake thing happening in the other moment. Is Drake saying what he's saying because he smashed also? Is she reacting the way that she's reacting because he did smash? Like, who knows what's going on? But essentially what we're getting the idea of, it doesn't matter. It's no one's, you know, no one's shaming her for sleeping with men. If you're single, do what you want to do. But as a dude, it's got to be hard to take, especially if you're finding out for the first time in the media. It's maybe one thing if she tells you, which she doesn't have any right to, she, you don't have any right to know if she wants to maybe tell you in terms of how you maybe conduct yourself and act in certain places might be useful because you might be there you know spudding and going over the top with the love and the br big bros at some celebrity basketball match not knowing all along that this guy was flipping you know going to town on your missus a couple of months ago you don't want that so maybe it's beneficial she'd just sit you down and say hey here's the guys I've been with categorically, here's the guys I haven't been with, if you hear these rumors, don't believe this, this is true. That might be handy, but if you're finding out for a real time, in front of everybody's hard to take. And this Instagram post, I think from him, is a clear sign of cope. Um, I guess they're at some Halloween party, and I guess after all that stuff that happened with Tori, after that stuff happened with flipping the baby, the stuff happened with Drake, with the, with the bar and flipping back outside boys, he then writes in the caption of him taking a picture with them two at a Halloween party, been new i had one a bad one a make a niggas mad one which is funny because you know you would assume he'd get violent and start to fight people because you know that's the thing that he's done beforehand when people have spoken ill of his woman but clearly when this drake getting involved you can't bring that kind of energy you don't want to get um you don't want to get put your hands on like drum did bless him as well he kind of caught strays in this whole flipping debacle but i don't know man spare a for part of some fontaine it's not easy being in a relationship with somebody that hot or that desirable that's usually the problem that people don't talk about often enough i guess happens on both sides especially for women if you're with a if you're with a guy that's high value or somebody that's incredibly attractive or the other especially attractive forget the value forget the flipping money side of things and status just somebody other girls think is hot it must be difficult to flip in live day by day with that you know what I mean? Because people get really disrespectful very easily, especially on social, outside in general. So imagine for this guy being in a relationship with Megan Thee Stallion, somebody a lot of people had a lot of love for, especially when, you know, pre-shooting and she was the hot girl summer thing, the twerking, like she was the one that everyone kind of had their eyes on. So clearly some people got the opportunity to get a bit closer than eyes. <laughs> and you have to kind of just hold it down at home bloody hell man absolutely brutal but you know big up both of them the album itself her loss like i said absolute classic um no words to say about that in general an absolute classic and i can't wait to listen to it again when i go to uh, for a run and outside again absolute bona fide 